Welcome back everybody, Gaming Grandpa here continuing with my MLS Explained Tutorial for Football Manager 23. First off, I need to apologize, it's been probably about two weeks since I made a video. I've had a horrible, horrible head cold. I did manage to make a few videos which will be coming up here pretty soon and you can definitely tell that I wasn't feeling well, so I'm sorry about that. Alright, we're going to continue with acquiring players. Now today I'm going to end up talking about the different ways you can actually acquire players to go into your roster in the MLS and I'm going to have at least three more sections involving acquiring players with the last section being pretty much a live action, so that's going to be kind of cool. So st stick around for that. Now the main way you can get not really the main way, but I'd say the more common way you can get players in the MLS is through free agency. Now, the MLS's definition is a little bit different than the rest of the world. A free agent is a player that is out of contract or had his option declined. The key to MLS is option declined. Now, if you look in your competition rules, you'll see the dates on all the transfer windows, and I encourage you to do that, you know, at the beginning of each season. That way you can know the dates because they do change and they're very strict on what you can and can't do during each transfer window. Now you can still sign a player anytime during the year, it's just they won't be allowed to come to your club until it's during one of the windows on the person, that, the player you're trying to sign. All right. Now outside the MLS, transfers for free agents work exactly, or contracts I should say, work exactly the same as the rest of the world. You know, MLS is a little bit different. Now, your transfer fees come out of your team's transfer budget just like it would in the rest of the world. Now, this is the difference. Additional fees that, a lot of times additional fees, they don't come out of your transfer budget. Like, when you have to pay a particular clause for a player and different things like that, or a sell-on fee, things like that, they may come out of your salary cap. It just depends on what the fee is. Some of them will come out of your transfer budget, but a lot of them come out of your salary cap. And whenever you sign a player, you should immediately, once he's on your roster, go to the squad registration and see, you know, the different impact each player had. And I'll get into that more later. Now, all the contract rules and roster registration rules apply for the MLS and that was in a previous episode. I wanted to talk about this just a second because this is something that you can't do in the MLS. You cannot sign players in the MLS from another team that have less than six months remaining under contract like you can in the rest of the world. However, outside teams can come in and sign players off of your team that have less than six months remaining under contract. It's, it's really goofy that we can't do it but that's the trade system that's what that is for so just keep that in mind if you have some players that have let's say four or three months left on their contracts that you're thinking about resigning but you're not sure if you notice that wanted tag pop up on there in the squad window go ahead and resign them otherwise there's a chance you might lose them for nothing all right so just keep that in mind now free agency inside the mls gets very very complicated there's so many rules to free agency, it's not even funny. I'm going to talk about an unrestricted free agent. Basically, an unrestricted free agent doesn't have any club that owns his MLS rights. The league still does, but not the club. And we already covered MLS rights, and it's just it's very complicated. But to be an unrestricted free agent, usually you have to be 24 years old or older and have at least five years or more of MLS service. So if a team releases or waves a player that meets these two criteria, they're no longer a restricted free agent, they're automatically unrestricted, okay? And that means that they just don't have any contract or options remaining. So we're going to get into the exceptions because this is MLS, there's always, always, always exceptions. All right, players, no matter what their age or amount of time in MLS, once they've been they cleared the waiver draft, in other words, players that did not get selected become an unrestricted free agent. Players that didn't get selected in the reentry draft become unrestricted free agents. Now the expansion draft teams, you know, players that aren't selected, they just they're still with their team. So we'll cover that in just a bit. Also, your youth academy players that are not signed by their current club that are eighteen or older become unrestricted free agents. Now the rights are still with that club for MLS teams but other clubs can come in for them that are in MLS that are in America and this just gets really 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 confusing. Sometimes youth academy players are unrestricted and other times they're restricted. It's just really it depends on a lot of issues and I'm just going to keep this here in unrestricted section for the most part. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. 
Now, undrafted kids from the Super Draft, and this gets confusing in the MLS, every kid in the Super Draft is a college player, okay? If they graduated college and were not selected in the draft, then they become unrestricted free agents. If they are college kids, then they be, they go on the college protected list and they go back into college and then they could come back in a draft or get drafted. It's really confusing. Just leave it here. Undrafted kids from the super draft that graduate college go here. All right, as an unrestricted free agent. Now, restricted free agents. These are players that still belong. The MLIs are still held by the releasing or waiving team. All right. Players can receive offers from teams, and a team holding the MLS rights must match the offer risk losing the player. Now, once again, it's really confusing on the MLS rights. Basically, if you see a player that you want to sign, and you go to offer him a contract, it will tell you right then and there what you can do. It will either come up to the contract screen, or it will come up saying you need to trade for the player's rights. That's the best way that you can tell what player is available, you know, as an unrestricted free agent or a restricted free agent. Now, a lot of times, even though they're restricted free agents and their MLS rights belong to some other club, just a few dollars on your, you know, allocation fund usually will allow you to have the rights. So it's it's really confusing. But once again, if you try to sign a player, it will tell you right then if you can or can't. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now, any player in the MLS that doesn't belong on a current roster okay so they're a free agent either either restricted or unrestricted they can be signed by teams outside the mls and if they're restricted then they get compensation your team loses the rights well no they don't lose the rights they still maintain the rights if the player comes back to the mls but instead of having to trade you know it will give them compensation and you all know what i'm talking about because you sign players outside the mls all the time that you have to pay compensation for signing that player okay now i'm going to cover the drafts and then that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Now, the first draft you're going to come into is the waiver draft. Now, this is mostly younger players with not much Major League Soccer service, but it's not always. And they're out of contract and or their options were declined. They're usually 21 or younger, and they have less than one year of Major League service. Notice I put an asterisk on that. All right. Now, you'll see players in here that are 27, 28, 29, but the key to being in the waiver draft is less than one year of Major League Soccer service. That is unwaverable, okay? The age really doesn't matter, but if you're 18, 19, or 20, then you won't be able to get into this draft unless you have less than one year of Major League service. So it's really confusing, but the key is the time of service, okay? Also, these players don't meet the requirements for their free agency or the reentry draft, and drafts in the MLS are just whacked. All right, now the fun one. The expansion draft. This, of course, only happens when there's an expansion team. So in this year, if you're not playing as St. Louis, you'll have the expansion draft. You'll get to go through it as a non-expansion team. All right. Now, next year, you won't have to do that because there's not any expansion teams. Now, every non-expansion team gets to protect only 12 players. Now, keep in mind that Generation Adidas players are exempt and you don't need to protect them. So if you have two Generation Adidas players, in essence, you can protect 14 players. All right. Now, if a team loses a player, they will receive GAM compensation for next season. And I covered that in the previous episode. Now, if you're the expansion team, then there's five rounds to this draft. You can only draft one player per team. And when you draft a player, you take over that contract. So keep in mind, if they're a designated player, under 22, international player slot, whatever, you know, they become yours. And if they're DP, then they're your DP. So just keep that in mind when you're going through the expansion draft. All right. Also, unlike every other draft, there is no trading allowed during the expansion draft. You can trade after and you can trade before, but you can't trade during the draft. All right. Now, the reentry draft. Usually they're 22 years old or older, and there's one or more years of Major League Soccer service. Now, unlike the waiver draft, you'll see, you know, you don't see young players in this one. Very, very rarely do you see young players. Like I said, they're usually 22 years or older. All right. Now, this one has three rounds and two separate days or two stages. So in essence, you technically can draft six players. I usually draft one, sometimes two if I'm on an expansion team, but that's it. I've only ever drafted one player as a non-expansion team ever in the re-entry draft. It's usually players that just really aren't that good. That's why they're not on the contract. All right. Now, <clears throat> the super draft, and this is the last thing I'm covering. All right. These are college kids once again. 
there's three rounds in a super draft. You start with three picks, one per round. So you have a first round, second round, third round pick. All right. The order is decided by the previous year's record. The worst team always goes first, except in an expansion year. The expansion teams trump the round order and they go first. So if you finish dead last and there's a stupid expansion team next year, then you're going to end up going second or maybe third, depending on how many expansion teams there are. Now, trading occurs really, really frequently, so watch for offers. In the bottom left corner, it will tell you view current offers. If that's highlighted in white, you'll know you have an offer. So before every pick, you should always check your offers to see because, once again, like if you notice the picture to the right, I just want to show you that for next year's draft. I have six picks. Do I want six? No, I don't, but it's good trade value. I actually traded a player, and I'll cover that later, and I gave up two picks. Otherwise, I would have eight picks and six first-round picks, but I gave up two for a player I really, really wanted on the MLS team, and these are really good trade bait. Now, it's also a good way to build up your youngsters because, you know, when I get into the registration, I'll show you ways that you can get around having more than 30 players, and that's because, you know, through the draft or whatever, or through waivers, you know, you just move them down to your B team, and you're good to go. All right, but we'll cover that later. Now, there's not a number of there's no limit to the number of picks you can have in a draft. Once again, I have six. I might have eight or ten by the time this draft starts next year. I don't know. Now, players that are not selected may become pre agents. Once again, it's the college restricted world, depending on if they graduated or not. All right. Now, the next episode, I'm going to have pretty much a live action of all the drafts. And then I'm going to continue more with the different ways of acquiring players. But that takes care of this episode. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.